Speaker. Te ura flavel. Kia ora, Mr. Speaker. Kia ora tato katoa i tēnei pō. Mr. Speaker, I'd have to say that uh, when our caucus had a look at this bill on the order paper today, sort of two, the two phrases that stuck out were anti-money laundering and terrorism and trying to work out, well, what the hang is the link between the two? Uh, be that as it may, uh, we can suggest that uh, the, anti the anti-money laundering and countering financing of terrorism bill has a pretty formidable title and um, there's a, obviously for a fairly formidable area of work. Uh, Mr Speaker, a key strength of this bill is to put in place um, a process by which uh, we are implementing recommendations from some fairly hefty global documents. Um, support for this bill will enable Aotearoa to be compliant with, with three documents, as I understand it. Uh, the UN Convention Against Transnational uh, Organised Crime, the International Convention for the Suppression of Financing of Terrorism, to which New Zealand is a, a state party, and also to progress compliance with the UN Convention Against Corruption, signed in December 2003. Uh, it also sets in train a process to adopt and implement the Financial Action Task Force recommendations, which are widely regarded as the international standard. So uh, if the three uh, conventions I mentioned earlier aren't significant enough, uh, this task force, by all ex extents and purposes, is a body that no one would want to, um, to mess with. Uh, I understand it's got fairly wide membership. Some 32 jurisdictions are involved, including uh, the European Commission and the Gulf Co Cooperation Council. Um, we, Aotearoa, have been a member of the task force since 1991, and our performance will be on the line in October 2009, just some three months from here. In fact, it's more than a matter of, of manners and simple courtesies between countries, Mr Speaker. The compliance has a slightly more serious shade to it. The Reserve Bank, in, in their briefing paper, identified that countries who are non-compliant or partially compliant uh, will be considered by a regional subgroup for inclusion on the FATF, International Cooperation Review Group, who can formally blacklist non-compliant countries. The same briefing paper revealed that New Zealand is yet to be assessed and our level of compliance is significantly below uh, below other, other nations, we typically compare ourselves to Australia, the United States and Canada, all of whom have made substantial progress in implementing the recommendations. So, Mr Speaker, there is the question of reputation at stake, and if our response to standard and poor credit rating is anything to go by, reputation is indeed everything. So the stage is set uh, to take this bill seriously by virtue of the fact that we take our international uh, responsibilities uh, seriously as well. If only that was, the, uh, if only that was the, the case in all aspects. You see, Mr Speaker, the New Zealand Government's inaction and, and in fact, willful disregard of the declarations of the rights of Indigenous peoples has often been commented on uh, in this House, in Indigenous forums uh, and in international human rights we right across the globe. Uh, the Māori Party, as you'd expect, sir, uh, places considerable priority on in enhancing our international reputation to respect to indigenous peoples, to tangata whenua, human rights, and also in the commitment to the global call for action uh, to end poverty. We will continue to speak out, as you would expect, about the need to be compliant and to respect our international obligations. Uh, we want to make the point, however, uh, that there needs to be a more robust process to the government uh, signing up to such arrangements, um, indeed a treaty-based process. Uh, an important variable in any discussion about domestic and international agreements uh, from the Māori Party perspective is the priority of uh, Crown consistency with the Treaty of Waitangi. Uh, this is not just a Māori Party commitment. Um, the relationship and uh, confidence and supply agreement with the National Party and the Māori Party states up front uh, that both parties will act in accordance with the Treaty of Waitangi, the Treaty of Waitangi. And yet this bill is another example of New Zealand gaining membership in a forum without treaty partner dialogue. Mr Speaker, the cost of achieving compliance with uh, treaty uh, justice is a cost that appears to be left out of the costings uh, included in the preparation for this bill. Uh, and yet we have every detail and more about other costs involved in the implementation uh, of, of this bill. And Mr, uh, uh, the, the former, one of the former speakers, Mr Hua, uh, spoke about that. 
An independent cost estimation undertaken for the Ministry of Justice in 2008 assessed that the start-up costs across financial institutions and, casino, and casinos uh, as $97 million, uh, over a two-year information period, with ongoing costs of $21 million per uh, year after, after that. The question of how these costs uh, to be met is expected to be within the banking sector, who will bear 84% of the start-up costs and 74% of the ongoing costs. Uh, but there are other costs of the Crown that require further attention. There's the question of monitoring and supervising reporting in entities, assessing money laundering uh, risks at national and sector levels, analysing an increased volume and variety of suspicious transaction reports, and ensuring adequate co uh, coordination of regulatory uh, functions across uh, multiple uh, supervisors. Mr Speaker, as I said earlier, this bill and the framework proposed are formid formidable in their scope, um, and this is where it gets relatively tricky, because of course these costs that banks will pick up are not just going to come out of corporate office in Wellington, or more to the point Sydney. Adopting the recommendations in this framework will increase business costs to consumers, which will be passed on to ordinary bank customers. So all of all this when banks have already shown, uh, ha have been shown to be overcharging their customers. Uh, Mr Speaker, the, the, the Rahui Kartani, our member on the Finance and Expenditure Committee, shared with me some of the extremely critical uh, comments made about the banking sector in their June 2009 report. In the report on the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Financial Stability Report, the Select Committee noted their surprise that despite the severe impact uh, of the current recession on business and household liquidity, uh, bank profits declined only marginally in the past year. Uh, their comment concluded, and I quote, some of us consider it vital that banks neither insulate their profit margins nor charge excessively high interest rates at the expense of the real economy and the taxpayers because of the potential adverse consequences for business and households." End of quote. Now, these are very timely reminders to focus on, uh, these sorts of things are very timely reminders to focus on uh, as we think about the downstream effects of compliance with the Financial Action Task Force Anti-Money Laundering and Compliance Financing of Terrorism Recommendations. Uh, we clearly have many uh, questions about the bill, its impact on Aotearoa and the status or need uh, for complying with the international framework in the first instance. Uh, we do, however, I want to extend the benefit of the doubt to enable full and frank response to the issues apparent in this bill, and it is for that reason that the Māori Party will support this bill to its first reading. Kia ora tata. Speaker. Speaker. Yeah.